for the brief introduction of mine. I would like to welcome all of you by the Indian style of Namaste. Let me start with the session, the webinar on Lubile flushing, myths, challenges, and the right practices. The content for the webinar would be pursuit to system purity, live cases. There are three live cases I would like to talk upon. There are six myths which I have identified during my experience of uh, lube oil flushing in the industry. There are certain challenges which are associated with the companies, the contractors and the service providers who offer the lube oil flushing. And we have uh, conceptualized five cornerstones of a successful oil flushing, which I would like to discuss with the audience today. Uh, with system purity, what we want to say is, it's not just uh, purifying the fluid or the lubricant which is passing through the system, but pipelines, cavities, um, manifolds, and various components of your lubrication system. By flushing, uh, if I talk in terms of a very layman language, flushing is a high velocity, sudden gush of low velocity fluid passing through the pipelines, components, and cavities. Are you confused? Let me give you an analogy. We all go to attend the nature's call uh, in the morning. And what we do is actually flushing on the shit pots. This is what we do for the pipelines, lubrication systems, hydraulic uh, machineries, and rotary equipment. There are three cases which I would like to put for the audience to ponder on. The first case is a refinery in Oman and the project it slipped its timeline because of an improper compressor flushing. The impact of the slippage was around five to $6 million to the EPC company and also to the operating organization. The second live example is a steel plant in my country, India, where a turbine driven boiler, uh, sorry, a turbine driven blower was being commissioned and the lube oil system of the turbine failed miserably just after commissioning. The impact was around $10 million. The third case is for the EH control system of a coal-based thermal power plant in India, where the server walls failed miserably around 10 in a very short duration of time, thereby impacting around $3 million to the operating power plant. Why did these incidences happened. We would like to understand these through the myths which are prevalent in the industry around lube oil flushing. Myth number one, oil flushing is only a pre-commissioning activity. No, oil flushing is certainly not an only pre-commissioning activity. Rather, it's required very much during the planned shutdowns, turnarounds, it's also required after you complete your breakdown activity of replacing certain parts of your equipment. It's a very important and major activity which you should perform if you replace your oil of the lubrication system. Myth number two, on-site oil flushing is a redundant activity if the rotary equipment and the supplied accessories were pre-flushed by the OEM in their own factory. It's a known fact that in any power plant or a refinery or any other manufacturing industry, there are multiple equipment which are erected and constructed on the site. There are multiple pipelines which are laid between the equipment from the lube oil system manifold to the various lubricating points. These pipelines might have been left in the yard of that project for a long time. And thereby we can see the pictures out here. There are rusted pipelines around, which may be fabricated during the commissioning phase. And thereby they would carry all this rust into your system right on the day one. Apart from the rusting, we also notice a lot of welding spatters, which are deposited on the internal surfaces of these pipelines when they are fabricated on site. It's very important to remove these before you start your equipment. Myth number three, oil flushing is a redundant activity 
if chemical cleaning has been performed properly and efficiently. We have found at multiple sites where chemical cleaning activity was carried out by the contractor, but lube oil flushing was ignored. Thereby, traces of water and chemicals which were used during the chemical cleaning activity were left into the pipelines, into the nook and corners of the network. Thereby, as soon as the system, the lubrication system was started, the oil, lube oil was contaminated immediately with water and chemicals, thereby degrading the lube oil permanently. Myth number four, efficient oil flushing happens at a very high pressure. Here I would like to say that flushing happens because of turbulence and turbulence is created by velocity which generates flow rate in a system. It's not because of pressure. Pressure is a byproduct of flow rate going into pipelines. Myth number five, oil flushing flow rates are decided based on the largest sized diameter of a pipeline of lubrication systems. We all know that lubrication systems are network of pipeline. There would be header lines, branch lines, pipelines and pipings providing oil to various bearing points and other components. Thereby, it's very important for us to find out turbulent flow rate requirement in each of these piping segments. Once you have the P and ID diagram of your network of the lubrication system, you need to find out the maximum flow rate you require for turbulence creation in each of these piping loops. Thereby, you can do an accumulation of all the flow rates thereby calculated, and then you can decide on the maximum amount of oil which you need to have an efficient flow rate in your system. Myth number six, oil flushing is all about attaining and generating a NAS1638 or ISO4406 cleanliness and offering these reports to your contractors or to your end users. Here I would like to differ. It's not just about NAS class or ISO levels because these two testing standards measure only a part of oil, which is around 100 milliliters or maybe less than that. Here, it's very important for us to follow a very important and major inspection activity, the I-614 standard, where mesh inspection is a mandatory activity to decide whether a flushing has completed or not. Only when you pass the mess inspection, one should follow IS, uh, ISO 4406 and NAS 1638. So you can say that NAS standards and ISO standards are secondary inspection, but mesh inspection is the primary inspection one should carry out to take a decision whether the flushing has commenced or not. Around oil flushing, there are many challenges. We as service providers and as original equipment manufacturers for oil flushing skids, we have pointed out three major challenges which our customers and potential customers face. The first one is oil flushing is a milestone activity for the EPC company. Thereby, there are shivers which run down the people out there if the flushing is not carried out timely and properly. The second most commonly used statement by most of our clients is, oil flushing has to be performed yesterday. This certainly means that they have ignored their timelines and could not plan well in advance for oil flushing activity of their project. And that's the reason they have come to a situation where they have to say, that we require oil flushing yesterday. There is an acute shortage of manpower and proper machinery to perform oil flushing activities in the industry. So these are the three challenges which we have identified and observed very commonly around our uh, sectors 
and around our geographies. Let us come to the uh, next topic of our webinar today, five cornerstones of oil flushing. So here, Minimac team is simplifying for you the decision making towards lube oil flushing. The first cornerstone is the decision on flushing flow rate. Flushing flow rate actually determines whether turbulence will be created in the respective pipeline or not. If you see on the right hand side, the formula for Reynolds number, the required Reynolds number for turbulent flow is 4000. And that's directly proportional to the velocity of the fluid. Hence, more the flow rate, higher is the turbulence, and thereby better is the uh, flushing in your pipeline. The second cornerstone of oil flushing is fluid viscosity. If I refer to the Reynolds number formula, we see that dynamic viscosity of the fluid is inversely proportional to the Reynolds number, thereby lower the viscosity of your fuel, fluid, you get a better Reynolds number, thereby a more efficient flushing for your pipelines. There are three more uh, cornerstones for oil flushing activity. The third one is oil temperature. The fourth is efficient filtration. And the fifth is fluid testing. Let us go to the subsequent slides to understand better about these cornerstones. So as we discussed about flushing flow rate, the first, we already understood that turbulent flow requires a Reynolds number of 4,000. The second point, under flow rate. If we are planning lube oil flushing for our pipeline network, we must ensure that each and every parallel branch line must have a turbulent flow. Thereby, the flow rate, what we decide for flushing in the header line, must be sufficient enough to create turbulence in each and every branch line and the lubricating lines of your bearing points. The third one is, you should have a pump which is capable enough to handle the back pressure which would be generated during flushing. Here, I would like to mention that flushing does not require pressure, but the pump which is performing the flushing will require a capability to sustain the back pressure. Another doing cornerstone great, is... Doing great, Anshuman. Uh, just a time check. Uh, you have a little bit around uh, 10 minutes. Thank you so much. The next uh, cornerstone is fluid viscosity. We can understand that lower the oil viscosity, the better is the turbulence. We initially discussed it in the Reynolds number formula for turbulence. This one is oil temperature. Now, oil temperature has three impacts on better flushing. First, it reduces the fluid viscosity temporarily, thereby you get a better flow efficiency and Reynolds number. The second, there are thermal shocks required for loosening the debris which is sticking to the internals of the pipelines. Thereby, you need a temperature variation during the flushing activity. Along with temperature variation, you also require mechanical shocks and for that, you use pipeline vibrators. Efficient flushing, efficient filtration. We need to have super clean fluid at the upstream of the pipelines so that they do not add further debris to your pipeline internals. Second, we need an efficient filter on the downstream of your pipeline so that whatever debris has been collected from the flushing lines is well trapped by these filters on the downstream. The third and the most important under filtration is the micron selection, filter efficiency, and the dirt holding capacity. We need to understand that most of the power packs and lube oil systems are designed for laminar flow and also designed for carrying very less amount of debris which is generated regularly in the lube oil system. However, when you are performing oil flushing activity, please expect heavy amount of sludge, debris, sand particles, dust particles, 
and whatnot. If you have worked in the field and you have performed oil flushing activity in past, you would have many crazy things coming out of your pipelines on the downstream. Hence, it is very important that you need to have a super efficient filtration system, which is assisting your flushing activity. The last and most important cornerstone of flushing is fluid testing. So there are three major uh, parameters for fluid testing. The first one is API 614 mesh inspection, where you carry out the mesh insertion into the return line of your pipeline, rather the downstream of the pipelines which is being flushed. Thereby, any dust or debris which is coming on the downstream is well collected on the mesh inspection screen and it can be further analyzed on the duration of flushing. Once the mesh inspection is cleared, you are done with the primary inspection. So you move on to the second and the third one, which are NAS1638 and ISO 4406. Most of the standards around the world talk about these three inspection parameters. If you talk about a typical flushing circuit, so we see here we have a lube oil system, we have a flushing line filter, we have an oil pump, and we have the reservoir from where the oil is being circulated into the lube oil system. We have a return line filter from where the oil will return back to the oil reservoir. In order to simplify this circuit, our company Minimax Systems has come up with multiple skids for oil flushing activity. These are external lube oil, hydraulic oil, and other fluid flushing skids, which are available in the market and used by multiple EPC contractors, service providers, and operating companies of the world. These are available in multiple sizes and multiple features based on the application area of lube oil flushing. When it comes to flushing, it might be a pre-commissioning activity where the zone standards are not required. It might be a zone related activity where hazardous gases are present. Hence, these kits can be built in ATEX compliant requirements as well. If there are offshore requirements for oil flushing, Minimac also builds skids for offshore compliance with DNV 2.7-1. In order to uh, conclude various reference standards around oil flushing, we have categorized them into ISO, ASTM, MIL, and also we have named certain OEMs for turbines and compressors who have their procedures and standard manuals around lube oil flushing. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have understood the concepts and the content of the presentation well. However, if there are any question answers, I would love to take them on. If you feel this is not the right time or you don't get time to ask your questions, you can always connect to Minimac team on the email ID provided below. INFO at minimac, M I N I M A C dot I N. We would be happy to help you. For a, more information, you can always visit our website, minimacsystems.com. Thank you so much for being a patient audience. Thank you, Calfun. You can take on from here.